Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jim Roddy, and welcome to the best of Allegheny County. The focus of our program is to introduce you to successful people who have a personal connection to Allegheny County. Whether these special people were born here or moved here, we want to tell you their stories. The show is presented by St. Barnabas, which has been caring for people in southwestern Pennsylvania since 1900. Today in Allegheny, Beaver, and Butler counties, we offer the full continuum of care, including independent living, living assistance, skill care, memory care, home care, and a lot more. Today we have a very interesting show. There's a new book out called The History of Wine as a Medicine. It is written by Philip Norrie, along with local contributors Dr. Joseph Maroon and Jeff Bose. We've all heard the reports about the benefit of red wine, and today uh, we're going to learn more about the history of wine and its health benefits to us. I can remember asking my doctor, uh, should I drink more red wine? And he said, absolutely, you should drink a lot more. And I said, well, you wouldn't tell me that if you knew how much I was drinking now. (laughs) And here to tell us about how much he drinks and how he and Dr. Maroon got involved with his book, is Jeff Bose. Welcome, Jeff. Well, thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure being here again with you today. Um, I I, I have to say, over the radio, it's hard to have a glass of wine with you, but I'm sure we'll have one soon. (laughs) I'm sure. Um, Well, I want you to tell our audience a little about yourself and about Dr. Maroon, and then we're going to talk about the book. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. Uh, I've been very privileged over the last 30 years to be an associate of Dr. Maroon in, in neurosurgery. And Dr. Maroon is uh, the area's premier neurosurgeon, if I say so myself, uh, and has worked uh, tirelessly for the Pittsburgh Steelers and other sports teams over a number of years. Uh, he has contributed a tremendous amount to concussion and brain health. And we were fortunate again about five years to um, be asked to participate as consultants with uh, St. Barnabas for their cognitive brain health program. So uh, it's been a great uh, relationship, and I'm glad to be here to tell you a little about red wine. Well, if you ever need any help, you and Dr. Maroon, with your neurosurgery, be sure and call me. Um, but we today, will. Yeah, today, how in the world did you get started in, with a book about wine? Well, it's a great It's actually our second book, uh, Jim, about uh, wine. Oh. We wrote one in 2009 called The Longevity Factor, How Resveratrol and Red Wine Can Activate Genes for a Longer and ha- Healthier Life. That uh, was a Simon & Schuster book, uh, and that book really uh, was the genesis of that, was meeting a colleague of ours in Boston at, at Harvard by the name of David Sinclair, who discovered the sirtuint genes, and this was quite the the news flash back at the time about sirtuint genes and how they were linked to longevity. And he had done a recent study, which has been now repeated in many other animals, where resveratrol, which comes from red wine, from the skins of red wine, uh, was given to animals and actually significantly prolonged their life and had many other health benefits. So at that time, we became very interested and sort of became known as the as the wine uh, people as far as resveratrol. And we were uh, contacted about two or three years ago by Dr. Nori. He is from Australia, and he is known as the wine doctor in, in that land down under. And uh, we were asked to contribute to his most recent book, as you said, The History of Wine as a Medicine. Was there a lot of research done on this, or just is it sort of isolated? Well, there's a lot of personal research, as you alluded to earlier. Uh, certainly, uh, it's not uncommon to ask a centenarian at their birthday, well, what do you contribute your long life to? And many will say a little glass of red wine every night. Yeah, my mother so, my mother lived to be 101, and she, drank, she said she drank a, a glass every day. I think it was more than that. Well, she was uh, trying to go to 200, perhaps. Right. But uh, it's uh, certainly nicknamed the elixir of life. There, it goes back thousands, if not tens of thousands of years as far as uh, documented human consumption of red wine and other wines. Uh, I keep on saying red wine for, for a specific reason and the fact that the 
molecules within the skin or the pigments that are found in the red grape primarily are the ones that have been attributed to have the most health benefits. So white wine would not have that same benefit. Well, it does, it does but not to the same degree. So right. if you know about winemaking process, uh, it sits in vats, and basically uh, the, the color of the wine is the color of the skin. So you can get blushes where they leave it in the in the bath, if you will, for shorter periods of time, where only some of the red uh, pigment leaches out. But mostly, red wines are, are are the different colors are from the the skin itself. So the red provides the most of these resveratrol and other antioxidant substances. Now. The health benefits of red wine and other wines get a little bit complicated because there's something else in wine that we haven't talked about, and that's alcohol. So I'm, uh, I'm alcohol, familiar with that. Yeah. Yes, I think a lot of our listeners are as well. Alcohol can come in uh, other forms, beer and, and hard liquor, but uh, it, it has, in, in moderation, in small amounts, has reported benefits in and of itself outside of uh, red wine. So it's been known to vasodilate or open blood vessels. has been one of the effects that we've noted. Uh, it also can reduce the fear or threat of clotting, which is associated with blood clots, for example, a heart attack or some other type of clotting. So if you so have a heart have, attack, the first thing you should do is open a bottle of red wine and drink it. Well, I think it's too late then. <laughs> So I wouldn't recommend that, but uh, it does have uh, significant health benefits related to heart health. It has been known to lower uh, the cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, uh, has been one of the other things that's been found to do, and as well as hypertension. It's been associated with lowering blood pressure, again, probably most likely through dilating blood vessels. So those are some of the more common uh, things that are attributed to uh, red wine and the molecules that are in the skins of the grapes. Well, now, for people that don't like wine or don't drink wine or have a reason not to drink, what what other foods or what other drinks could they take that would right. give them a similar benefit? Well, well, it's a great question, and I I'm not advocating alcohol. I think that there's there's we're not doing that today. We're we're recommending certain molecules that are found in the skins of grapes and also in wine because that's what wine is made from, but there's certainly other sources of very highly powerful antioxidants. And as I said earlier, resveratrol and other chemicals that have been found to be healthy in red wine are found in the skin. So if you have a a brightly colored fruit, for example, like blueberries would be a great example, uh, the the pigments themselves, the molecules that are in in brightly colored fruit actually impart uh, many health benefits that we call antioxidants. So what are antioxidants? Antioxidants are made by the body, but they're sort of depleted because we live in a world where we're exposed with pollution and smoking and other factors that lower our uh, antioxidants that our body makes to the levels where we can get diseases. So additional antioxidants are often recommended for people in order to build that up. What about just uh, drinking a lot of grape juice? Well, that's a great question. We get that all the time uh, as we've written a couple books on that. And the issue with grape juice as far as commercially made is it's pasteurized. So there's a concern that when it goes through that heat process, these very sensitive molecules that are found in the skin of grapes can be broken down. Uh, it's not to say that there's no uh, benefit relative to grape, red grape juice. There's certainly some of the molecules of the pigment that come in. Obviously, it's grape-colored. It's it's a purplish color, but it's not to the degree that is, is done like through a cold press or other ways, or just eating grapes themselves or blueberries themselves. Uh, the fruits, the brightly colored fruits that you can imagine uh, are the ones that have been found to be most healthiest for us. Well, now, if, if uh, I would drink a different kind of, let's say I drank a wine that had been aged for 50 years. I remember being in Greece and drinking a a wine. It was was a red wine, but it was a sweet red wine. And Uh it had been aged for 80 years. It's called Mavra Daphne. And evidently a very good wine, although I didn't particularly like the taste. But, But now, does aging change the benefits? Do some of those benefits uh, 
uh, go away if after aging for 10 or 15 years in a bottle of wine? Well, well you're assuming, and I'm assuming uh, from what you've stated, that the wine was not exposed to air. So what does air do? Well, it brings in oxygen. Anything exposed to oxygen will oxidize. So that basically breaks it down. So resveratrol, and another name for it besides antioxidants, sort of its action, but it's called a polyphenol. And polyphenols can be broken down over time to other different polyphenols called tannins. You've probably heard of tannins. Yes. Uh, There's sort of the tartness that you feel on the back of the tongue whenever you taste a, a very full-bodied, older wine. So it depends, obviously, on a lot of things, how the condition was maintained and, and whether the oxygen was exposed. But, but there if, is if things the cork that happen is, over... If the cork is in there tight, you're probably safe. I mean, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, but over time, there are changes relative to the breakdown of those polyphenols and the different uh, polyphenols and tannins. So it can change the flavor. And you've all, we've all know that if we have a glass of wine and put the cork on it and then come back a week later, uh, we've exposed it to air and it tastes bad or, or off. Uh, and that's a result of the oxygen oxidizing those different polyphenols. Well, now, where can our listeners go to get this book? Well, uh, the first book we wrote was Simon & Schuster, The Longevity Factors, available at, uh, on Amazon and, and most of your online retailers. Uh, it, it's been around for a little while. And then, like I said, I, this book was published in Australia. Uh, it is available, uh, but I don't, I don't know if it has. It just came out, so I don't know if it's hit the Amazon market. And the, uh, name, and the name of the book? It's called The History of uh, Wine as a Medicine. History of so, Wine as a Medicine. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I'm going to go and look for the book, and I'm going to stock up on wine, and the next time you see me, I'll be looking much better. <laughs> you look good to me, Jim. All right. Jeff Bose, thank you so much for being with us today. This is Jim Roddy, ladies and gentlemen, for St. Barnabas, and this is the best of Allegheny County, and we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Your mom holds a special place in your heart. She remembers everything about you. Your first word, favorite toy, as well as the cute things you did as a child. She's always been by your side, making memories and your favorite cookies. Today, it's getting harder for her to live alone. St. Barnabas Memory Care and Personal Care Services will allow your mom to continue creating memories in a safe, caring environment. To schedule a tour, call 724-443-0700. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jim Roddy, and welcome to the best of Allegheny County. The focus of our program is to introduce you to successful people who have a personal connection to Allegheny County. Whether these special people were born here or moved here, we want to tell you their stories. The show is presented by St. Barnabas, which has been caring for people in southwestern Pennsylvania since 1900. Today in Allegheny, Beaver, Butler counties, we offer the full continuum of care, including independent living, living assistance, skill care, memory care, home care, and much more. We are excited today with our guest. It's many of you remember the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Steelers from 1970 to 2000, Three Rivers Stadium. It's been 50 years since the first game was held at the stadium and I'm sure everyone listening has a story that they can tell about a game or a concert at Three Rivers. You're going to enjoy our guest today, author and historian David Fernoli and Tom Rooney from the Rooney Sports and Entertainment Group. They wrote a book about Three Rivers Stadium, A Confluence of Champions. David, tell us a little about the book. Well, the book is, is just a celebration of, of the great events that took place there, the memories that that most Pittsburgh sports fans of the era had there. People forget that the Steelers were um, among the worst franchises in the NFL before they moved to Three River Stadium. And that was the House of Champions. Those were the last great Pirate teams there. Pitt played for the national championship, beating Penn State there to go on to the Sugar Bowl in 1976. A lot of great concerts, a lot of great memories. Uh, for me, personally, it's it's where I grew up. It was the, the stadium of my youth. And... Um, we just felt that uh, as the 50th anniversary of the first game was approaching, it was time to, to get the memories out there and, and start writing about it. Well, you know, I, you're right about the memories. I, 
I moved to Pittsburgh in December of 1978. And in January, the Steelers won the Super Bowl, and then in 2000, uh, in 1979, and then that fall, uh, the uh, I went to the game that uh, that clinched the World Series for the Pirates, and uh, I think we were playing Baltimore, and that was a it was a really great experience. I thought, boy, this is great. We won the Super Bowl. We won the World. the uh, World Series, <coughs> it's going to be like it's this every year. <laughs> yeah. And then it was a yeah. few years before we, we came back and did that. Uh, well, yeah. The Steelers and been a very long time with the Pirates. In fact, yeah. uh, I understand the Pirates, there was a, at some point, the Pirates were considering uh, hiring doc, Dr. Kevorkian to be their <laughs> team physician. <laughs> I I, th- I I believe that that uh, in the mid eighties I believe they definitely were, were looking at that. <laughs> well, what made you want to write a book about this uh, stadium? I'll, I'll tell you what is um, as the new stadium came up and you know people were were just down on on three rivers. It was a cookie cutter stadium. It was bad for baseball. This and that to me. The memories inside are what make a stadium. I mean, PNC has great, great uh, sites. is a, is a great stadium for baseball. But you know what? Give me, give me the championships. Give me the teams that are winning inside. That's a stadium I'd like to go to. And uh, I, I just wanted people to uh, have those memories and, and a younger generation who maybe wasn't around for it to understand what went on. Where did you get the list of people that helped you? That told you all these stories? Uh, that. There's there's a lot of people that were probably uh, uh, gone and, and uh, departed bef- by the time you wrote the book. Absolutely. Well, the list of people, a lot of them were, were uh, folks I went to Duquesne with, um, and a collection of great historians. Uh, there's Bill Rainier there, who um, is one of the preeminent pirate historians who I've done some books with in the past. Chris Fletcher was a former... Um, editor and publisher of Pittsburgh Magazine, who is a great sports historian. Um, Gary Ken, John Franco, again, both became historians, sports historians. Um, Bob Healy, who played on, uh, who became national championship football team in 2002, uh, has a great uh, uh, background for football history. Tom Rooney, uh, who, who's here with us today, just magnificent stories about his experience there. Um, there, there's Josh, who's a uh, talk show host on the CW, sports talk show host, who um, takes us through the later years of Three Rivers, the implosion, the Plan B, um, and it's just a great collection of, uh, of, of folks that we have. And the thing about it was that everybody took a year, and they went through their personal greatest moment of that year. And I, I think gathering this all together throughout 30 years of its existence just makes for a very interesting book. Well, now, were there people that were like ushers or or uh, ground crews that were included in the stories? Uh, there were. There's a, there's a uh, part of it that I have, which um, is the building of the stadium, which uh, is uh, a guy whose father was the head of construction, uh, Jack Sison, who um, gave us some great stories uh, of the building of the stadium. But most of it is, is about the games, um, and, and most of it is is not about just the games that happened, but their effect on the history uh, of sports in the city and, and in the country. Well, now, Tom, Tom uh, Rooney, yeah. tell us about your role in, in the book. Well, um, we do a lot of events, uh, our company does, around uh, the celebrations. Jim, you were so uh, kind to be the chairman of our 50th anniversary for the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum a few years ago. And, uh, of course, Pittsburgh's 250 was not, you know, too long ago in the, in the past. Uh, NFL is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. We're actually producing the Negro League Centennial this year. You know, uh, we'll have uh, several events at the uh, John Hines History Center. People like to anticipate and celebrate, you know, those events and to, to look back and to share the memories with their kids and uh it's a great time especially in this age of multimedia go back and see video and and into basically relive those moments so um you know 
I'm always keen as to like who's going to have a celebration coming up this year. You know, actually, the first radio station uh, broadcast was a hundred years ago. Uh, you know, in 1920, right. uh, it would be a hundred years with KDKA. So, um, you know, it, it, people point to those things, they celebrate those. And, and a lot of sponsors like to get involved because it's, it's part of our great legacy, uh, whatever it is to be able to celebrate those events. Last year was the hundredth anniversary at the end of world war, uh, one, uh, that, that was an immense celebration worldwide. Jim, you know, you're a veteran. Um, we're coming up on some of the big anniversary is of the Vietnam War. So, uh, you know, it's it's a time for people to reflect and to, uh, and to think uh, some of the good times and some of the bad times. So it's really in your role as a, uh, as a producer and a promoter of uh, events that you, you were in the stadium a lot and met people and, and signed uh, concerts and, and uh, had, had concerts there. Um, what yeah. was your favorite moment in the stadium? What everyone has. Well, you know one. what? Here's the funny thing: my two best moments at the stadium happened within 20 feet of each other and within months. And that was Roberto Clemente's 300th hit, and it was, of course, the immaculate reception. And you know, uh, 10 years ago, we did the celebration of the 40th anniversary of the immaculate reception. Um, I was telling my cousin Art, I said. I don't know if we can wait till the 50th because we may lose some people along the way. So we, we were happy to do that. And, uh, there's a great monument down there. We will be doing, uh, markers for home plate, second base and pitcher's mound, uh, for three rivers as part of all this also. And as we were doing the whole stuff with Google earth and doing all the metrics, we, it came to be that we found out that only 20 feet separate where Roberto doffed his cap after a 3000 hit. And where Franco uh, caught that ball, you know, in his shoe tops and, and went into the end zone. You know, we didn't know it would be Franco's uh, or it would be uh, Roberto's last hit. But, uh, you know, uh, with in the case of Franco, we were pretty sure it was a special moment. In fact, the NFL recently named it as the single uh, most uh, significant play in the history of the league. Yeah, I saw that on television. And, and I'm sorry that I didn't get to do, uh, be interviewed for the book because I have a story about my two grandsons. Uh, they were okay. just real small. One's a captain in the Marine Corps now in, in Afghanistan, and the other's a college professor. But they were young boys, and they were big baseball fans. And I brought them to town, and I took them in to the Pirates locker room. And uh, Willie Stargell was decided he would take them around and introduce them to all the players. And they were just mesmerized, and and he he got them baseball gloves and gave them gloves, and then uh, he took them out on the field before the game. They were playing the Houston Astros, I think, and he took them out on the field, and and uh, and they got to sit on the bench during batting practice, and they still talk about that. They were real young; they were probably eight and ten years old or something. And uh, no. but they, th- my stock as a grandfather went up about a hundred percent. There you go. Uh, it was it's a great it was a great moment for me just to see them see their faces. Oh, it was it was amazing. Well, the Dave, what's your favorite event uh, that well, I'll tell you, you can I'll tell remember? You what, I, I have two. Um, the first one was the '94 All Star Game. And that was right before the strike that canceled the World Series. And but. It, it was the most exciting All Star game I had ever seen. The crowd was was uh, was all jazzed up, and, and it, was, it was just a great experience. We'd gone to the home run derby uh, and, and went to all the events, Roberto's uh, the statue uh, unveiling, and that was just such a special week, especially with what was to follow. And my second was a 1995 AFC Championship game. As you said, I, w- I was a freshman in '79, and we thought those championships were just going to keep coming. And they never did. Well, it's it, these are great stories. And listen, I want to thank both of you for being with us today. It's a great. Uh, how, how do how do people find your book? Um, on August uh, or April sixth, um, it will be available at Barnes and Noble and local bookstores, as well as Amazon and all online retailers. And you can pre-order it on Amazon now. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and we'd like to thank both David Fernoli and Tom Rooney for taking time to tell us about the new book about Three Rivers Stadium. 
We thank our thank listeners. Thank you, Jim, for your service to our country and to our, and to our county. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. We thank our listeners for joining us each week, and please tune in on Saturday mornings at 9 o'clock on Sundays at noon for the best of Allegheny County, presented by St. Barnabas, a place that is apart from the ordinary. Learn more about St. Barnabas by calling 724-443-0700. Honey, I'm so excited. I found the perfect solution for us and your parents. Really? It's St. Barnabas. For us, they have the Woodlands, a beautiful carriage home community. Very interesting. And for your parents, there's the village. It has an indoor mall with shops, a place to do their banking, and great restaurants. Plus, we can relax knowing they're safe and secure. St. Barnabas has everything we're looking for. Great. Let's schedule a tour. 